Welcome to our lengthy DPS video. Throughout this video, it'll be narrated by different moderators. So if you hear the voices changing, that's normal. Enjoy! Here is a brief listing of the melee DPS role skills. First is Second Wind. At level 8, has a recast of 120 seconds, instantly restores own HP, cure potency 500, Cure potency varies with current attack power. Next is Arm's Length, level 12. Recast, 60 seconds. Creates a barrier delivering slow plus 30% to any attackers. Duration, 15 seconds. Next, Leg Sweep, level 16. Recast, 40 seconds. Stuns target. Duration, 3 seconds. Diversion, level 20. Recast, 120 seconds. Reduces Enmity Generation, Duration 15 seconds. Invigorate, Level 24, Recast 120 seconds. Instantly restores 400 TP. Bloodbath, Level 32, Recast 90 seconds. Converts portion of physical damage dealt into HP. Goad, Level 36, Recast 180 seconds. Refreshes TP of a single party member. Duration 30 seconds. Faint. Level 40. Recast 120 seconds. Lowers target's strength and dexterity by 15%. Duration 10 seconds. Crutch. Level 44. Recast 90 seconds. Removes bind and heavy from target party member other than self. True North. Level 48. Recast, 150 seconds. Nullifies all action direction requirements. Duration, 15 seconds. Hey guys, MomoFist here with a melee DPS breakdown, starting with our newest class, Samurai. Now Samurai has two class resources, one set of glyphs and a class resource bar. The glyphs are collectively called Sin and individually called Setsu, Getsu, and Ka. The class resource bar is the Kinky Gauge. Samurai has three single target weapon skill combos that consume TP to charge Sin and Kinky. Samurai has two multi target weapon skill combos that consume more TP to charge Sin and Kinky. Iaijatsu consumes Sin to apply a dot, deal multi target damage, or deal single target damage. Alternatively, Hagakure converts Sin to charge Kinky. Kinky can also be generated by a couple of other skills. Kinky can be consumed by Hisatsu skills to deal single target damage, deal multi target damage, deal very strong multi target damage, or provide a pseudo crit. Other Hisatsu skills allow for mobility and range single target damage. Samurai also has another resource, their Open Eyes buff, which can be consumed to deal damage or heal themselves. Samurai also has a buff that allows them to avoid actually healing combos. Broadly, Samurai's gameplay flow involves weapon skill combos to set up Sin and Kinky. Sin can be consumed to deal damage or converted to Kinky, which also deals damage. When logging into Stormblood, ninjas will find themselves more like Naruto Shippuden and less like the original Naruto series. Now, Mutilate, Sneak Attack, and Kiss of the Wasp and Viper will be removed. Goad will also be available as a melee roll skill. New to the ninja UI are the Ninki Gauge and Hutan Gauge. Ninki Gauge is charged by auto attacks and mug, while Hutan Gauge is charged by mudra combinations. They can be consumed to unlock more actions. Hutan's tooltip has also been updated. It now reduces weapon skill, spell cast time, recast time, and auto attack delay by 15%. Traits have also been reworked to better fit this system. Existing skills have also gone through minor changes. Combo actions have been reordered, many skills have had their potencies increased, and the required levels for Trick Attack and Shadow Fang have been changed. Ninjas will learn three new skills in Stormblood. Hellfrog Medium, learned at level 62, instantly delivers a 400 potency point-blank AoE attack at the cost of 80 Ninki Gauge. Avakakra, obtained at level 68, instantly delivers a 550 potency attack and has a recast time of 50 seconds. At level 70, ninjas will learn Tenshijin, 
which is a cooldown with a duration of 10 seconds and a recast time of 100 seconds. It doubles the potency of all ninjutsu. It also reduces the recast time of ninjutsu to 1 second and eliminates required mudra consumption for ninjutsu execution. Moving will cancel Chenchi Jin. Dragoon's abilities are getting a major overhaul in Stormblood. They'll lose Feint, Keen Flurry, Leg Sweep, Invigorate, Phlebotomize, Power Surge, and Ring of Thorns. Doom Spike will also be available at level 40, not 42. Many skills also have increased potencies. Gear Scoble has a new 35 second cooldown and no longer reduces the duration of Blood of the Dragon. Dragoon gains a new buff, Dive Ready, which is gained whenever Jump is used. At level 62, Dragoon learns Sonic Thrust, an AoE ability that combos from Doom Spike. For 120 TP, it damages enemies in front of you at 170 potency. Dragoon gains a new trait at level 64, Lance Mastery. Remember Fang and Claw and its companion skill Wheeling Thrust? Now you can use one immediately after using the other, extending the basic Dragoon combo by another skill. At level 66, Dragon Sight grants Dragoon a second utility ability. Dragon Sight lets you pick an ally to tether. As long as you remain in a 6 Yom range of them, you gain 10% damage and they gain 5% damage. It lasts 15 seconds and has a 120 second cooldown. At level 68, Dragoons learn Mirage Dive, which consumes the Dive Ready buff from Jump. It deals damage with 200 potency. If you have either Blood or Life of the Dragon active, Mirage Dive will also add one eye to your Dragon Gauge. At level 70, Dragoon learns their final trait, Life of the Dragon. When the Dragoon reaches 4 Dragon Eyes using Gearscope, it will upgrade Blood of the Dragon to Life of the Dragon. Life of the Dragon replaces Gearscogel with Nostron. Nostron's damage is 100 potency higher than Gearscogel's damage, and also has a 10 second cooldown. When Life of the Dragon expires, it reverts to Blood of the Dragon. First off, Monk has had 4 skills removed. Featherfoot, Second Wind, which is now a roll skill, Haymaker, and Touch of Death. New changes to already present skills include a slightly extended Grease Lightning Timer, Internal release giving a crit rate of 30%, Twin Snakes increasing damage by 10%, and Mantra increasing healing magic by 20%, without the addition of a trait buff. In addition to this, One Elm Punch no longer removes a beneficial effect from the enemy, but rather has a 1 second stun that is impervious to stun nullifying effects. The removed traits are Enhanced Featherfoot, Enhanced Twin Snakes, Third Wind, Enhanced Internal Release, Mithril Peak, and Enhanced Mantra. New traits include Deep Meditation, which is learned at level 62, and Tackle Mastery, which is learned at level 66. Deep Meditation grants a 30% chance that a Chakra will open upon dealing a critical hit with a weapon skill, which is main gaining Chakra that much easier. Tackle Mastery changes the effect of Shoulder Tackle depending on which fist stance you use. Earth adds a knockback to the tackle, but the range is reduced. Wind grants an immediate second tackle after the first, however the damage is halved, and fire increases the damage dealt by the tackle. The new tackles are respectively named Wind Tackle, Earth Tackle, and Fire Tackle. Along with these new traits comes new skills, but the first two are riddles. Riddle of Earth and Riddle of Fire to be exact, haha, <laughs> okay. Riddle of Earth is a level 64 skill, with a duration of 30 seconds, a recast time of 60 seconds. Activating Riddle of Earth automatically grants Fist of Earth a new buff called Earth's Reply which reduces damage by an additional 10%. In addition to all of that, Riddle of Earth also extends the Grease Lightning duration to maximum, which means we have a better chance of keeping our stacks during downtime. Riddle of Fire is the second new skill. It is learned at level 68, has a duration of 20 seconds, and a recast time of 90 seconds. Riddle of Fire increases damage dealt by 20%, while increasing weapon skill recast time by 30%. Might be a good time to start cracking open some skill speed material with the boys. One of my favorite new additions to Monk is this next move. Brotherhood is a level 70 skill with a duration of 15 seconds and a recast time of 90 seconds. Brotherhood increases damage dealt by nearby party members by 5%. If that's not enough for you, it also grants a 30% chance of opening a chakra each time a party member under the effect of Brotherhood uses a weapon skill. 
This will be a good opportunity to yell at your bard to stop auto-attacking and remind him he has weapon skills. All in all, our rotation hasn't changed much at all, and we have more chances to use chakra skills. This has been Momofist, yeehaw. Hey there, my name's Ruby, and I'll be going over the changes to the caster DPS in Stormblood. Let's start off by previewing the caster roll skill. To manage spellcasting, swiftcast and surecast are now roll skills. To manage aggro, diversion, which is quelling strikes by a new name, is a roll skill for melee and caster DPS. Bard will lose quelling strikes. To manage aggro and mana, Lucid Dreaming, which is Shroud of Saints by a new name, is a roll skill, and White Mage will lose Shroud of Saints. It refreshes MP and dumps half your current enmity. Mana Shift allows a caster to transfer up to 20% of their maximum MP to a party member, with a cooldown of 150 seconds. It pairs really well with Black Mages and their infinite mana. To mitigate damage, Addle, a new skill, and Apocatastasis from Black Mage are now caster roll skills. Addle replaces Virus and reduces only intelligence and mind. Arcanists will lose Virus. To manage debuffs, Casters learn Break and Erase. Break inflicts Heavy, which reduces the target's movement speed, and Erase removes a dot from an ally. For Self-Sustain, Drain does a small amount of damage and heals the caster for 100% of damage dealt. Raging Strikes is now exclusive for bards, which should make cooldowns simpler to manage. Notably, none of the new caster roll spells actually directly boost your damage. Instead, they all provide party utility. Let's talk about the changes to Black Mage. One of the biggest changes to the job is that Enochian no longer has to be kept up. As long as you're in Astral Fire or Umbral Ice, you won't lose it. Since Astral Fire and Umbral Ice last for 12 seconds, and your Transpose is on a 12 second cooldown, you should never lose an Okian. After maintaining it for 30 seconds, you get a buff called Polyglot, which I'll explain later. Another change is that Blizzard 4 now gives you 3 Umbral Hearts. These Hearts completely nullify the MP cost increase for Fire spells caused by Astral Fire. For example, casting Fire 4 while you have an Umbral Heart available will make it so the spell will only cost a measly 884 MP. Lastly, via two new traits, Thunder 1 and Thunder 2 are now replaced by Thunder 3 and Thunder 4, respectively. If you scale down to older content, you regain the ability to cast the old Thunders. Now, let's talk about the new abilities. Level 62 gets Black Mage the skill Between the Lines. This allows the user to instantly jump back to your ley lines if you have any active. The ability has a 3 second cooldown. Level 64 grants the long-awaited Thunder 4. This is an AoE Thunder that inflicts every mob in a 25 yam radius with your Thunder Dot. 66 brings us the triple cast ability, which as the name suggests allows the user to cast the next three spells instantly. Finally, at level 70, Black Mage gets the ability Foul. Foul is an AoE with a whopping 650 potency. The catch is that this move can only be executed while under the effect of Polyglot. Polyglot is consumed upon the use of Foul. Moving on to Summoner. Summoners will lose Virus, Sustain, Eye for an Eye, Miasma 2, Spur, and a few traits. Virus is now Addle and is a caster DPS roll ability. Eye for an Eye is now exclusive to healers. Summoner's UI will gain the Aether Flow gauge, that allows easier tracking of Aether Flow and Aether Trail Attunement. Additionally, a new Trance gauge allows quick identification of the time remaining in the current trance. Among other changes, Bane's area damage has been reduced, which also affects Scholars. Garuda's Contagion no longer extends dots, and instead increases the magic damage taken by the target. Dreadworm Trance now disables Aether Flow and resets the duration of Tri Disaster. When it ends, it partially fills your trance gauge. Casting Tri Disaster boosts the potency of rune spells casted in the next 15 seconds, which affects rune 1, 2, 3, and 4. At level 62, summoners will learn Rune Mastery, a trait that enables rune 4 to be cast. There is a 15% chance that the trait will trigger after a pet uses a skill, and rune 4 will immediately replace the current rune, which will be either rune 1 or 3. It deals 200 potency, but is buffed temporarily after casting Tri Disaster. Aether Pact, obtainable at level 64, allows pets to execute Devotion, which increases the attack potency, healing magic potency, and defense of all party members within a 30 yarm radius by 5%. Level 68 brings Enhanced Enkindle, which reduces the recast time of Enkindle every time the new level 62 trait, Rune Mastery, activates. Reaching level 70 brings two new abilities. The first is Summon Bahamut, which summons Demi Bahamut to replace your currently summoned pet for 20 seconds. Anytime you cast a spell, Demi Bahamut will follow up on the same target with Shockwave, a 160 potency attack. While Demi Bahamut is summoned, you can cast Akmorn once, which deals a whopping 680 potency of AoE damage without desummoning Demi Bahamut. When Demi Bahamut automatically desummons, your previous pet will return. Time to move on to the final caster, the brand new job, Red Mage. Red Mage's class resource is two additional mana bars, Black Mana and White Mana. Casting spells generates mana and weapon skills can drain mana. 
accidentally causing a large difference between black and white mana makes it difficult to restore balance. Red Mage's signature trait is Dual Cast, which gives a swift cast buff after casting any spell. Because so many of their spells are cast in two spell combos, Dual Cast allows for bonus spell casting style and flair, but also provides more mobility. The standard 1-2-3 weapon skill combo consumes TP to deal some damage, and can consume equal amounts of black and white mana to deal more damage. The AoE weapon skill consumes TP to deal damage, and can also be upgraded via black and white mana consumption. The elemental spells generate black or white mana, but never both. Their combos can be chained from the 1-2-3 weapon skill into Verholi or Verflayer. Alternatively, they can be chained from RNG procs on for Thunder or Verero. The single target and AoE unaspected spells generate a small amount of black and white mana. With impact, you can also opt to not generate mana for slightly higher potency. Red Mage's personal utility buffs job resource generation and grants mobility. Their party utility provides cure, raise, and party damage buffs. To help with their burst, Red Mages also have two off the global cooldown damage spells with no resource costs. Broadly, Red Mage's gameplay flow involves weapon skill combos to enable generation of job resources, using acceleration and manification to generate even more black and white mana, and then using weapon skills to consume black and white mana to deal damage. The new range DPS roll abilities replace some of the skills removed from Machinist and Bard. The crowd control effects from Machinist skills are now applied by various Graze skills, which deal no damage. Resource restore effects from both classes as well as Bard's Swift Song are also applied by roll abilities. Interestingly, ranged DPS can now cast Rampart on an ally. Bard has minor changes to core gameplay and utility, and major changes to its song system. It has a new class resource, Repertoire, which is generated and consumed by songs. The basic non-dot gameplay is essentially the same. Note the removal of Wide Volley and Swift Song. The basic dot gameplay is essentially the same, but with longer lasting dots. Note that the trait River of Blood has been removed. It is now integrated with songs. Straighter Shot can now be used to deal bonus damage at the cost of not refreshing Straight Shot. Buffs are now streamlined and Bards only have two buffs to themselves. Utility from Warden's Payon is unchanged, but Bards now gain a targeted convalescence. Miscellaneous traits are unchanged. Songs now directly reduce enemy damage or buff ally damage by a critical hit rate. Note that River of Blood is now in effect on Mage's Ballad. The other two songs interact with Repertoire, the new Bard resource. Army's Payon replaces River of Blood with and allows you to build Repertoire stacks, which are like miniature Grease Lightning. Wanderer's Minette replaces River of Blood and prevents you from building repertoire stacks, but allows you to consume them to deal burst damage. Finally, all three songs can be buffed by other abilities, which provide party utility or boost party damage. Machinists gain a new class resource, Heat, that unlocks with Goss Barrel. It reduces damage upon reaching 100%. Their new skills focus on managing Heat. Heat is used to increase the damage of the 1-2-3 combo, and stacks with the effects of Reload. Lead Shot and Granado Shot have been removed. Machinists' off-GCD skills have also been simplified. Random Mind is no longer a competitor skill to dismantle. Furthermore, Suppressive Fire and Head Graze are now roll skills that don't deal damage. Machinist retains most of its own buffs and are mostly retained, which maintains the job's aspect of buff alignment. Notably, the recast times of buffs are now much easier to handle. Turrets no longer restore MP or TP, and resource restoration is now a roll skill. Their buff to party damage has been decreased, and Bishop Auto Turret's AoE damage has been slightly decreased. Miscellaneous traits are unchanged. Samurai and Red Mage both look to be promising DPS classes with strong output. Samurai emphasizes this high DPS output while Red Mage trades some personal DPS for combat mobility and fantastic party utility, especially with Verays. The three pre-existing melee classes gain incredible windows of single target burst. Ninja with 10 Chi Jin, Dragoon with both Mirage Dive and Nastrond, and Monk with Brotherhood. To help give each melee DPS separate identities, they also gain some separate strengths. 
Ninja with multi-target burst, Dragoon with single target burst, and Monk with regular party damage buffs. Machinist has even greater focus on cooldown management to maximize burst, while Bard trades that burst for consistent party damage buffs, and with brief windows of further buffs. Uniquely, Bard can increase the party's maximum HP. Both jobs can still fulfill resource replenishment duties. Summoner gets something new and awesome to summon, and moves his identity away from a strong, consistent AoE dot mage towards a mage with windows of strong, single target damage, supplemented with party damage buffs. Black Mage, on the other hand, is cemented as an AoE caster with its new spells, and also enjoys skills that help with mobility.